Welcome to the Pharma Voice Editor's Take video series, filmed live at the 2013 DIA Annual Meeting in Boston, hosted by Taryn Grome, editor of Pharma Voice. In this episode, Taryn meets with Jeff Batzinger, Vice President, Global Medical and Regulatory Affairs, CMED. Jeff, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your schedule to meet with us for our 2013 GIA Editor's Take video program. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Um, Jeff, what are some of the key challenges companies face in reaching go, no-go clinical decisions efficiently before phase three? I think that's actually a very tough question based on the type of technologies that are coming out today. Five, ten years ago, you could probably generate a generic answer based on NCEs and other chemical entities. But because now you're looking at nanotechnology, biosimilars, biologics, combination products, that process gets a lot harder. So the challenge is actually determining very early on, do you have a viable product based on your technology, not based on the regulation? So you have to use the system in such a way that the early phase work is driving you towards the clinical relevance, not necessarily towards an outdated regulatory system that may not understand what you need to demonstrate to be a viable product. And what are some of the key strategies or processes companies need to consider to arrive at this critical decision? Get other people involved. It's kind of like when anyone looks at their own child, they only see the best. And occasionally it's better to have an outsider, such as a full service company that has all the elements. There, you don't want just a CRO, you don't need just a clinical trial. Having that early phase support from a company that will help you get from the concept to phase one is critical to give that kind of view of just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that, for small biotech companies, is invaluable. Um, so it's sort of like having the, the nanny in town. It no, is. <laughs> it kind of is. Well, we, we have to tell the truth. We have to say it may be a beautiful baby, but... <laughs> um, where do you see the biggest opportunities for CROs in the next two to three years? I think the biggest opportunity is going to be supporting the smaller biotechs from concept to commercialization. But it's going to be allowing them to choose the services that best fit. The existing models, especially with larger CROs, you have to either take all or get nothing. And with the smaller companies, they need to be fast, they need to be nimble, and they need to be dynamic. You need a CRO that can help that. And the mid-sized CROs that have a buffet of services that they can say, right now, I only need PK and CMC. Six months from now, I might need another bit of the PD data, or we might look at a phase one or animal trials. I think the biggest opportunity is going to be providing those services at the level needed for the client, rather than saying it's all or nothing. Those are great insights. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to visit with us. Thank you very much for having me. Additional editors take videos, as well as podcasts, white papers, webinars, and more are available in the resources area at www.pharmavoice.com.